What is nuclear diamond battery? All you need to know. Numerous modern devices are powered by batteries. Our increasingly digitalized world depends on battery power to function, including electric vehicles, cell phones, computers, and many more devices. In order to meet humanity's growing demand for batteries in a way that is appropriate for an Industry 4.0 enabled society, scientists are working quickly to develop a nuclear diamond battery. The most typical battery found today, a lithium-ion battery powers the device you are using to watch this video. These batteries do have their limitations though. They are delicate, expensive, requires a lot of upkeep, and pollute the environment when discarded. Whether they are in use or not, lithium-ion batteries have a short lifespan that quickly runs out. Better batteries are required for humanity. The nuclear diamond battery is said to be capable of lasting up to 28,000 years and uses nuclear waste as its primary power source and diamonds as its heat conducting material. Naturally, you wouldn't have to worry about running out of juice on a hike or a night out if your phone was fueled by a nuclear diamond battery. Aside from consumer gadgets, batteries have the potential to revolutionize a significant portions of the current economy. They are beneficial for things like spaceships, satellites, high-altitude drones, and medical devices because they essentially last forever. Such devices need batteries with a long lifespan in order to function because replacing them would be expensive and difficult, especially if the battery is integrated into the product. It's not like we can simply launch into space and change the AA batteries in a satellite like we would a light bulb. In 2016, physicists, chemists, and researchers at the University of Bristol started creating what are now known as radioactive diamond batteries. They advertised their invention as a beta voltage device, indicating that it is run by the beta disintegrations of nuclear waste. An atom's nucleus increases, nucleus releases some particles when it has too many to maintain a steady protons to neutrons ratio. Beta decay is the name of this process. This causes the creations of beta radiations, a type of ionizing radiations that comprises numerous beta particles, also referred to as high-speed, high-energy electrons and positrons. A typical beta voltage cell consists of radioactive materials sandwiched between thin layers of semiconductors. An electric current is produced when the nuclear material's beta particles, which are generated during its disintegrations, knocks electrons loose in the semiconductor. However, as the radioactive source is moved further away from the semiconductor, its power density falls. Nuclear batteries are hence far less efficient than traditional battery kinds. Here, the polycrystalline diamond comes into play. Anywhere close to them, however, the health risks associated with beta voltics are equivalent to those associated with, with exit signs, which produce their distinctive red glow using the radioactive substance tritium. Beta particles, in contrast to gamma rays or other harmful radiation types, can be stopped in their tracks by a thin layer of shielding as thin as a few millimeters. According to Lance Hubbard, a material scientific at Pacific Northwest National Laboratory who is not associated with arc and light, usually just the wall of the battery, is adequate to stop any emission. They are quite safe for people because the interior is rarely radioactive at all. And he continues, the nuclear battery decays to a stable conditions when its energy runs out. So there is no radioactive waste left over. The first beta voltakes appeared on the scene in the 1970s, but nobody really used them until lately. Prior to being finally supplanted by less expensive lithium-ion substitutes, they were initially utilized in pacemakers, where a defective power pouch might mean the difference between life and death. The emergence of low-power device today marks the beginning of a new age for nuclear batteries. We are talking microwatts or even picowatts here. So, there are a terrific power choice, according to Hubbard. The revival of these power sources was facilitated by the Internet of Things. A nuclear battery's capacity is strictly limited, just like that of solar panels. The power density decreases with increasing distance from the radioactive source to the semiconductor. Therefore, the power of the cell will decrease if the battery's layers are more than a few microns thick. Furthermore, because beta particles are randomly emitted in all directions, only a small portions of them will really strike the semiconductor and turn into electricity. Hubbard claims that a nuclear battery's efficiency of roughly 7% is considered to be state-of-the-art in terms of the amount of radiations it can transform into power. Nuclear diamond battery is made using chemical vapor deposition a process that is often used to make synthetic diamonds. Researchers have modified the process to produce radioactive diamonds by using radioactive methane containing the radioactive element carbon-14, which is present on irradiated reactor graphite blocks. These diamonds have the ability to behave as radioactive sources and semiconductors. 
While exposed to beta radiations, you'll get a long-lasting battery that doesn't need to be recharged due to the radioactive waste that fills its inside. It can recharge itself for eons with little to no detectable degradations over hundreds of years. Theoretically, a single battery might be used for over a thousand years without needing to be replaced or recharged. Although the battery is functional, it cannot be utilized in devices like laptops or cell phones. Its use is restricted to tiny devices with low power requirements due to the relatively little power it offers. Researchers are working on technology that would allow them to develop and sustain the idea so that it may be used on a huge commercial scale. The first product from Arkenlight, an English company commercializing Bristol's radioactive diamond battery, is scheduled to hit the market in the latter half of 2023 as a micro battery for pacemakers and sensors. Is it possible to power an electric car? CEO of Arkenlight Morgan Boardman responds, the answer is no. According to him, the bulk of the battery would be much more than the vehicle mass in order to run anything that energy-hungry. Instead, the business is focusing on uses for its technology that makes routine battery replacement either impossible or prohibitive, such as sensors in dangerous or isolated areas like nuclear waste sites or on satellites. In addition, Boardman sees domestic uses for the company's nuclear batteries, such as in pacemaker or wearables. Instead of the reverse, he imagines a world in which people swap out their devices but keep their batteries. Boardman claims that you'll need to replace the fire alarm before the batteries. Perhaps, not surprisingly, many people dislike the thought of possessing something radioactive. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel.